Well, hello there, outer space artists. Welcome to a drawing tutorial that is based on an artist named Pam Peacock. She has a website that's called thevoyagerpeacock.com and this is actually a coloring sheet on the right that you could download and print for free and enjoy her art style if you choose. She's got more than one. She's got five you can print out or you could just look at her ideas and do your own drawing. I did the one on the left in her style. So I'm going to draw with you today step by step. Grab a sheet of paper get ready to go and let's do a drawing in Pam Peacock style otherwise known as the Voyager Peacock and she's awesome she inspired my students and I last year I had fourth grade do a project on her and they did beautiful art and you could even view their art I'll tell you how at the end of this video so here we go. Get something to draw with. Get a sheet of paper. Put it in front of you the tall ways or the vertical ways. Are you ready? I'm going to draw with a Sharpie marker, but it might be safest for you to start by drawing with a pencil. You could always go over your pencil lines. At the end, and make your lines show up more, that's always a good idea too. It's up to you. So let's begin with a simple shape. I'm going to talk about the elements of our line, shape, color, form, space, and I'll try to keep it simple. So for the top of my space station, I'm going to make a circle. I will not complete the circle at the bottom. I'm going to make a big circle. So you should go to the top of your paper. You might even put a couple fingers at the top so you could draw right be below that as a starting point. At the bottom of the circle, I'm going to draw a horizontal rounded line connecting the two sides and this horizontal side to side line is a little bit rounded to show that my space station is rounded so we need to draw rounded lines and that will help give the indication that our space station is not only rounded, but it's three-dimensional. I put little lines to add detail at the bottom. And I'm going to make my space station look a little bit 3D by adding in these highlights at the side. This is an idea I actually got from another artist and art teacher that I follow, Cassie Stevens. I'm going to put a window in the middle. I want you to go big. Go big. You could draw first with your finger to practice. I'm making two circles, one circle inside of the other. That's called concentric circles or concentric shapes. When we put the same shape inside of another shape. Now I'm going to make some imaginative shapes on the side. This could be the shutters, very imaginative shutters for a window. And I might even put a little cartoon alien inside my ship. So I'm adding my own ideas to this drawing after viewing art by the Voyager Peacock 
I was inspired. So I'm making some details like hers, but I'm adding in many of my own. Now, I'm going to make some interesting lines where this part of the space station connects to another part. I'm following my lines. These are actually called parallel because these two lines and these two lines, they would never cross. There's space in between them and I'm making them kind of rounded, going in different directions. I'll even put some little rounded lines on top and that will show again that these tubes are a rounded shape. I'm trying to show that not only are they rounded shapes, but they could be forms. When I say form, that means three-dimensional. So it looks more realistic. Next, I'm gonna put two rectangles connected, and then I'll put an oval for the bottom of the space station. So it's a double decker. When you're drawing, it w I think it would be more comfortable for you to turn the paper as you go. You might turn the paper to the side. That way it could be easier to draw a simple shape and make it more accurate if you turn the paper just to make it more comfortable for you on the table. I'm making circles now on top. These could be windows. I'm going to put some lines to show imaginary reflections in the glass to show that it's that to show that these are windows. And I'm going to put again some horizontal kind of rounded lines going from one side to the other for detail. And I made them a little bit rounded because this is a rounded form. I want to try to show the illusion that it's a rounded form on my flat paper. So, Follow along, you can pause the video at any time. I'm making highlights on the side to show reflections. I made rectangles for details underneath. And I'm even putting some squares inside. Put any shapes you want and designs you want. Make interesting lines to show details on your space station. Now I'm going to make some vertical lines, tall lines, up and down. And look at this. I'm using little horizontal lines for shading. I'm adding a little bit of value. And when I say value, I'm talking about the lightness or darkness of a color. I'm adding value for interest. And this value or shading that I, I'm making with lines, again, could help show the illusion of three dimensions and form on my paper. We know the paper is flat, so I am showing an illusion here. Artists are like magicians. Now, I'm going down to the bottom of my paper and I'm drawing half of a cloud. I'm sticking my marker in the middle Go to the middle of your paper. You might even put a dot there so you know where to begin. And I'm going big. I'm going high up and I'm making rounded lines. One is kind of medium size, one's smaller, and one's really big. Now that shows variety. It's kind of fun, I think. My space station will be standing on top of two imaginary clouds. I'm making another one. I'm even going to do some shading with lines. There's di different ways to add value and do shading. As an artist, 
we can do all different things. I'm using straight lines right now for my shading. Sometimes we cross hatch and we put lines going in different directions on top of each other. Now I'm drawing some diagonal lines for imaginative shading on my other cloud. I like how my drawing goes right to the edge of the paper. And the clouds are actually half on and half off. Look at this. I'm doing a crisscross. I put two straight parallel lines, diagonal lines, um, in the middle here. And I'm overlapping two more straight parallel lines. I had to stop and continue as soon as I could for that one and back. Now I'm doing a little shading again with lines. Okay, next, I need some details up here. Here's a rectangle. I'll put maybe some little X's in it. And I'll have something coming out of my space station. It's going to be a claw. And this claw is reaching down. And it's going to grab something. So make pointy shapes. Use your imagination on this. Hey, there's my rounded lines again. Don't forget that to make it look a little bit 3D and add interest and detail. So my claw is reaching here towards a poor little character. Could it be a Martian? Now it's running. It's trying to get away. Do you think it's going to be able to get away? I need one more arm. I made bent arms and legs. Remember the lesson from last week? Here are some action lines to show that it's running. Make your own little characters around your picture. Here are some stars. I'm using diamonds for these stars. You could make imaginative stars with spirals, polka dots. Make traditional stars. Make shooting stars. There's so many ideas. Put in some ideas from this one, please. I'm not going to talk about everything I did on my drawing. I actually did that drawing. So I hope you'll get some ideas from it. I was practicing, and I tried to add in as many different ideas as I could. And I looked at art from last year for my fourth graders to get ideas for this one on my left. Right now I'm making, this could be a light or it could be some sort of a speaker. So I made two rounded lines coming up and a little circle on top. Now these straight lines coming out are indicating that the light is shining or that a speaker is making noise. And I'm going to put a loopy line. I got this idea from Pam Peacock. So this loopy line is going to another one. That's kind of fun. The way it's going kind of all around and uneven. Some of these loops are smaller. Some are bigger. And it's shining or it's making noise. Look at these ovals. These ovals remind me of a ring around the planet Saturn. Now, should I put another planet in my drawing. I actually was thinking about making the planet Earth. This could be Earth over here. You could trace a cap to get a perfect circle. You could crop your, your circle, your planets at the edge if you want to make a big one and you don't have room. I really like details that are cropped off at the edges that are large. Please do that. Fill up the space on your page with fun details. Some de details could be small, but some should really be big. They should be so big that they're cropped off at the edge. Just like these clouds at the top, I'm making sort of a frame 
with the clouds at the top. The Voyager Peacock, Pam Peacock has examples where there's a landscape at the bottom with mountains and the landscape turns into almost a frame for the picture. So you'll have to view more of her art. Now I want to point out some things that you might draw on your own. I've got another little spaceship here landing. I've got a Martian, a silly monster, a little character holding flowers and balloons. I have flying hearts. I have a cupcake that reminds me of the planet Saturn. And I have an upside down Martian peeking in. Hey, I've got planet Earth here. I even labeled it. I've got two characters over here saying, hello. You could even make little cartoon speech bubbles. I really like these speakers here. It looks like there's some sound coming out of them. You can even add music notes, actually. That would be fun. So notice the difference in my uh, this drawing compared to the one that I'm working at here. And I want to show you some more coloring sheets by Pam Peacock now that you could print out at home. Take a look. She makes all different ones in the same style, but she varies her theme. So this one has a horizontal side to side composition and more planets in the background. This one, ooh, look at that, is another horizontal picture and it's filled up with more fun details made out of simple shapes and simple lines. I see wavy lines here. They're overlapping. I wonder if you could do that. How about this? It reminds me of a rocket ship. It might be a rocket ship or another super awesome space station. And I've got one more here. Whoa. Take a look at that. So go to the VoyagerPeacock.com to see these and or to print them out. You could just look and, and draw from the computer if you want. Now I do have more ideas I wanted to mention on where you can become inspired for outer space art for children. You can pause this. You could even take a screenshot of it. I wrote out my, my ideas, but I'll go over them quickly. So this tutorial was inspired by artist Pam Peacock, and you should visit the VoyagerPeacock.com. Thank you, Pam. We love you. View outer space student art for my students on the Elementary Art Teacher Google website. You should have the link for that if you're a Novi student. And go to the Meet the Teacher page. I have a Google Photo album with the outer space art from last year. You should really take a look. It's totally gorgeous and fun. Lots of good ideas that your kids um, could become inspired by. Now Cassie Stevens is an art teacher who's online and she did a whole outer space week with five different outer space themed activities recently. She also did a couple more posts on outer space because of May 4th. May the 4th, the force be with you. She did a Baby Yoda drawing and an R2-D2 Colograph print. Search for her activities on Google. There's an artist by the name of Kenny Scharf who paints out of this world art that's bright and cartoon style. Look him up. Creative Galaxy is a show on Amazon Prime. It's a, it's a series and there are cartoons and they actually do art activities within the space theme cartoons. Mark Kistler is a cartoonist that I've been following for years. He has drawing books for kids and he does outer space themed pictures 
and he does a lot of shading to make um, things look 3D. So if you want to learn about drawing 3D and using value and uh, shading, you should visit Mark Kistler online and maybe even buy one of his books. Do you remember the Jetsons cartoons, parents? When I was young, I watched the Jetsons on TV, and it's an outer space themed cartoon. Search YouTube for um, Jetsons cartoons. And last but not least, Art for Kids Hub is always great. So thanks for drawing with me today, and thanks again, Pam Peacock, for being so awesome. I hope you'll do some outer space art, and be creative. Take care, everybody. Stay safe. We miss you.